a buck and give your dollar a squeezy. The girl's got the answer, you better believe me. Take it from Tara. Take it from Tara. And hey, I'm Tara. It's so good to see you. By the way, this show is brought to you by Beth Sturgeon Northup for the Shamrock Foundation Aero Fund, in case you didn't hear me say that the first time. But uh, <laughs> welcome to the show. It's Monday. It's a beautiful day outside. As you heard, it was 50 degrees and sunshine has been plentiful. So we have had a great day at the dog park and elsewhere. Very glad to have you with us. James Sane has returned. Hi, James. Hi. So good to see you again. Thank he you was, for uh, me. well, we love to invite you. He <laughs> was so much in demand that uh, he had to come back again, which is really cool. So, our musical guest, James Sane, he's got a whole bunch of new music and he is in the middle of a huge project. I think it's called There Is No Course for This in College. <laughs> 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 Writing 700 songs. Uh, no, no, learning. Oh, learning, like learning 700. 700 songs. Oh, well, yeah, I figured like you could write, write them like too. 100 in, you know, while doing that. Okay, so write 100, <laughs> learn 700. I like that. And we also have another great group of guests. Scott Sinta is with us with his beautiful graphical art. We have News on the Green Triangle with Kirk Candle. The blown glass artist Sergio Vittori is with us with some of his beautiful work. And Frederica Chambers is uh, talking to the animals and nurse practitioners Leela Fawcett and Kathy Waits here to talk about some legislation in Frankfurt that could be a big impact on nurse practitioners. So we will start out first with uh, Scott Sinta. And before I do that, Kathy, station manager, I have a lot of reverb in my ear, so I'm kind of hearing myself about a half a second after uh, I speak. That sounds like a little bit better. So Scott Sinta, welcome. Hi, Glad to Tara. see you again. Well, it's nice to be here. I'm going to move that mic over too. here just a tiny little... Okay. There we go, a yeah, tiny little bit. So basically, um, you and your twin brother, Greg, formed Smash Graphics uh, as a, an extension of another company. It quickly became a full-service design firm and publishing company, and you've had so many awards. And I want to talk to you about the awards first, because I'm looking at them. I'm seeing Addies, Louis, Gold and Silver, Bronze Awards... Uh, PIAS Awards of Excellence and Certificates of Merit, the Louisville Graphic Design Association. You just have all these awards. Where do you put them all? Have you built a cabinet just for the awards? <laughs> no. Some are hanging on the wall. Some are in drawers. <laughs> the pretty ones, the cool ones. Well, and some of the <laughs> You run out of room. You know? Some of the work that you've done is here, and I'm just going to go ahead and let you pop that one. Um, the original? Yeah, the one big piece up, even though it's it's not TV, okay? It's Ustream, which is a smaller version of regular video, but you can kind of see See, it's a three-dimensional collage, beautiful work, and just one of the years. And um, this one was for the Orange Bowl for, cool. for UofL. They won the Orange Bowl. Uh, Sugar Bowl, I'm sorry. Sugar Bowl, that's Sugar right. Sugar Bowl. I did the Orange Bowl that's in you, 2007, <laughs> and they called, and we, we worked the arrangement out and a contract, and I produced this Sugar Bowl print, and it just it's a collage of memorabilia representing... And we'll go ahead and show, okay. and that's heavy too. Boy, yes. I tell you what, that's a that's a kind of a collector's item that people would only want to, you know, to purchase and buy because it's going to be so valuable when we're thinking back in 20 years about our big Sugar Bowl championship. So let's talk about this because this is a great example of one of the posters that you do, and it's actually a picture of the collage. Correct. Um, once I build the piece of art, the three-dimensional piece of art, then I take it in the studio, we light it, put reflector cards on to get it all the light just right, photograph it uh, digitally now. Amazing. In the, in the old days... <laughs> you did film. We, we did E6 8x10 transparency. Oh, gosh, that is amazing. And, um, then, and now you have to... Send a three-dimensional piece and it actually carries over to the two-dimensional poster exactly that's uh, very cool a lot of people a lot of artists sometimes think oh he did that in photoshop yeah you know? 
Well, that most is not, done in Photoshop. Mo- yeah, it's not working it every day. Yeah, yeah, including pictures of celebrities that people are showing up with from the Oscars I see on Facebook. Oh, my. Know? I haven't yeah. checked that out yet. Yeah, I'm, sure I'm still it's... wondering if Benham Sims actually Photoshopped Ashley Judd into that picture if he was really standing next to her. I'm curious. <laughs> I haven't seen that yet. <laughs> <laughs> He's a famous attorney here in town. He'd do just about anything. So anyway, this is awesome to see these beautiful posters, and you create them for every event and all kinds of events. Who are some of the other people that you would uh, be working for? Well, uh, University of Kentucky, football and basketball. University of Louisville, football and basketball. You cross that bridge, don't you? Oh, you have to. Yes, you, you have do. To, you, have to su- you have to supply the frame shops, galleries, and specialty shops with everybody. Absolutely. With both teams. That's right. Indiana basketball. Good. Uh, we do city prints, and, and they're... they're Titled through the years. This is this is a, a date stamped item, but our evergreen pieces are like the Kentucky Derby through yes, the years. Yes, we did that in nineteen eighty nine. Yeah, nineteen ninety nine, so and it still sells today because it encompasses the entire Derby event. Why they call it an evergreen piece? That's right. Now the sad part of your story, and you know we've talked about this because I had actually met you and your twin brother Greg, and you, you suffered a terrible loss when he passed away, and I. I'd just like you to touch on how that shared, you know, experience with with your twin brother has impacted your life and your career because the company has gone on and you've made it a huge success even after his passing. Yeah, it'll be a year uh, on the 28th of this month. Wow. And he uh, suffered uh, brain cancer. He had a glioblastoma mm-hmm. and happened on Oaks Day or Oaks Derby Week yes. that Monday morning. He had surgery on Oaks Day. So uh, he battled it for 20, 22 months. And, uh, you know, we, we, we worked together for 23 years as partners and started the business. And we're both artists. We both went to art school together at Ringling School of Art and Design Isn't and studied amazing? art. And our professors, we studied under the same professors. Our, our thought process was, was we're like one person. Sure. Really. You shared a womb. You spent 52 mm-hmm. years together. Yep. And uh, we would work on projects, and we thought so much alike. We bounced off each other really well. Yes. And people would say, how do you work with your brother? I said, well, <laughs> not just that he's my twin, but we thought so much alike. We never argued. We never had fights or anything. Most marriages Business. can't say that, that much about their relationship, which is pretty amazing. We both married blondes. Oh, funny. We both have two children. Isn't that incredible? So who has become the go-to person for you as far as throwing ideas out and brainstorming? Oh, I'm still struggling yeah, with that. Yeah, there's no a one to really bit. replace there's him, no, I yeah, know. I, I can imagine. I'm not going to take on a new partner. I've down I've scaled back a little bit, but this is the first project, the first through the years print that I've done since he passed. Mm-hmm. So that's why I'm dedicating this and a and a percentage of the profits to the BIAK. Right. BIAK is a really big organization mm-hmm. and we, you know, know we talked about that. I was involved with it when Hugh Finn had his accident mm-hmm. and the Brain Injury Association of Kentucky does wonderful work yes, for do. so many people who have received, you know, terrible news from the medical front, from car accidents, from horseback riding accidents, biking, whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, Brain Injury Association does a lot of good work. So that's fantastic that a portion of the proceeds go to that. Yeah. I, I, I wanted to do that for Greg and we we had a lot of closure, you know, in the end there. So, yes. uh, you know, I told him I would take the business and, and continue on Smash Graphic. I changed my logo a little bit and put his initials in the logo. A lot of people haven't even noticed it. That's pretty awesome. But SG is in the logo and everything that's printed. And um, and the saying that he has on is on my business card, go out and make a difference in someone's life today, because he told his two children that every yeah, day. Yeah, I bet. And that's the key. If mm-hmm. you live every single day as if it was going to be your last Maybe you yep. will make a difference in exactly. someone's life. Exactly. Well, I love the work that you're doing, and I love you for showing this. And, and what I would really like to know is where we can look for your work, because I know it says uh, on your website that you've actually been selected to be a permanent part of the Ringling College of Art and Design's collection, which is pretty cool yes, I have for an a, alumnus. I have, a, I have uh, two pieces in the permanent collection at the school. And, and then the Indianapolis, uh, the Indiana State Museum in Indianapolis, and the UK Basketball Museum in Lexington. So you've got some mm-hmm. great postings around the place. Yeah, and my na- my eyes are out there. Yeah, I bet. So tell us about uh, the type of work that you would put on a permanent installation. Would that be an evergreen piece, or would it be one of these? It would be it. Uh, any of them. Oh, all any of, the of them. Yeah. All of them. Yeah, they would. They they could be evergreens. Mo- we do like the Indianapolis City print. We do the Louisville City print. Boston City print was the very first print. Kentucky Derby through the years, uh, and then we had a winners print. We've done projects for U of L outside of 
doing these shadow box prints, other yeah. prints that are out there. I we think you gave me the, the wonderful Louisville, uh, Louisville City, City print. print. The very That's first print we did. Cool. You can look at the website, which is beautiful, and it really shows these. We can't show them to you nearly as clearly as you'll see them when you look there, but it's smashgraphics.com. Smash Graphics, one word with an X at the end. That's right, Smash Graphics. So check it out on the web, see what you can do. And if you purchase these prints, uh, are they available online or oh, are you yes, selling them in stores? They're, inv- they're available online. They can buy them in stores. And the dealers, uh, frame shops and galleries all in Louisville have them. Now. Wonderful. And a, per- a percentage of the proceeds of these posters, the 2013 All-State mm-hmm. Sugar Bowl champions, goes to the Brain Injury Association of Kentucky. Yes. Well, we appreciate that very much. What's a telephone number? If people are interested in the art, want to know more about it, know more about you and mm-hmm. what you're doing, if they have projects for you to, to possibly work on, how can they reach you? They can reach me by calling 502-817-9111. Or just look up Scott Sinta at yeah. Smash Graphics. And by the way, he's a Trinity guy. So just in case you have any <laughs> affiliation with the schools and you really like the Shamrocks, he's your man. <laughs> Scott, thanks so much for taking thank the time you, to Tara. come and visit with us thank today. Thank you very much. Really it's appreciate you. Great to see you, you again. Great to see really you. And is. thank you for our print. You're we will welcome. display this proudly on the mantle amongst all the dogs' pictures. Okay. That's, that's a place of honor. <laughs> thank you so much. I'm James, honored to be there. Well, well, we're so glad to have you with us. Uh, James, you're going to be playing for us in just a second. But first, we want to thank our sponsor, Beth Sturgeon Northup of Weikert Realty ABG Properties for her sponsorship of the show. She has supported the Arrow Fund through the entire month of February. The Arrow Fund does great things, saving tortured, abused, and injured animals, taking them to the hospital, getting them the great care, and then having a huge foster network to uh, nurse them through their medical recovery. So we thank Beth Sturgeon Northup, and we thank Rebecca Eves of the Arrow Fund. Uh, they were guests on the show not too long ago. So thank you both. Uh, Appreciate you very much. And when we come back, James is going to be playing and singing, and we'll talk to a couple of uh, very interesting people about nurse practitioners in Kentucky. The Shamrock Arrow Fund provides medical treatment. James Singh joins us again to uh, play a little bit of the music that he's writing. I said 700 songs, but it's really only 100. So, James, will you take a minute or two and give us one of your wonderful tunes? Well, because you wanted me to sing, I'm actually having to do something else. Okay, well, do whatever you want to do. It's your time, it's your music, it's your mic. Okay. James Singh, ladies and gentlemen. Well, this is A.A. Uh, a. Bondi's song. Cool. New guy is pretty good. Cool. Up with the evening sun Oh, the river rolls on by Neighbors, they tell secrets Oh, the neighbors, they tell lies Somewhere a plane went down Oh, Lord, things they never stop Somebody feels a night but it calls the cops Oh, the living and the dying How easily you burn Do you don't go around devil's loose I love that. That's beautiful. What is the title of that song? Uh, when the Devil's Loose by A.A. Uh, a. Bondi. A. A. Bondi. I like that a lot. <laughs> now, is this a person who has recorded contemporarily, or is... Yeah, he's a newer artist. Okay. Um, and he's... That's probably not even his best song. It's just the one I had in my head. I like <laughs> that a lot. And do you actually read music, or do you just hear the songs and just play them and kind it's, of like rote musician? It's a little bit of both. Yeah? Like the easy stuff, like pop stuff. Sure. I just hear it and, and kind of figure it out. But the more difficult stuff, yeah, it's probably best to just go ahead and get it right the first time. Yes, it down is. <laughs> hunt it down and figure it out. That's right. Thank so. you, James Sane. That was fantastic. And uh, joining us now, two folks who know a lot about the uh, nurse practitioners in the state of Kentucky. One of them happens to be a nurse practitioner, and that's Kathy Waits. Yes. How long have you been a nurse practitioner, madam? For 17 years. 17 years. And yes. Leela Fawcett is the executive director 
of the Take a Deep Breath. Kentucky Coalition <laughs> of Nurse Practitioners and Certified Nurse Midwives. It actually very Did I close, get it all? just one extra word in there. But okay, yes, but nurse midwives. Yes. yes. I don't yes. need certified. <laughs> okay, so nurse <laughs> practitioners and nurse midwives, let's let's describe them and define them, and whichever one of you want to do that is fine. I know they hold graduate degrees, and they are not required to work under a doctor's supervision, which is great for those of us who go to nurse practitioners for our medical care, and I'm one of them. Mm-hmm. What can nurse practitioners do for patients? You want to take that one? Okay. Nurses are... Nurse practitioners are nurses first. We are advanced practice providers. Yes. Meaning that we have graduate degrees and up, above and beyond our basic level of, of nursing education. Yes. And we provide care for patients regarding any per, you know particular problem. I'm a family nurse practitioner and a women's health nurse practitioner. I'm dual certified. So any particular problem from... A tiny baby to old, I can take care of. So my nurse practitioners are Melinda Staten and Jan Eklund from the Women's Center, and they deal with gynecology and bladder disorders. So that would be their specialty. Their specialty. But they'll help me out if I get a sinus infection or something, too. Exactly. Which is pretty awesome. But I never knew, and this is the part that kind of makes me wonder, that nurse practitioners and certified nurse midwives have to have a contractual agreement with a doctor for writing prescriptions you know, for for certain drugs. And 17 states in Washington, T.C. don't require it. Why does Kentucky require a doctor to oversee that? Leela, you want to take that one? Well, uh, simply put, even though nurse practitioners are educated and trained to prescribe non-scheduled medicines, Mm -hmm. um, as a compromise in 1996, when the nurse practitioners were attempting to, to get prescriptive authority, the Kentucky Medical Association and the nurse practitioners at that time worked out this compromise in order to get that prescriptive authority in the first place. Okay. And, and in that time, uh, nurse practitioners and nurse midwives have been prescribing safely. There hasn't been a single complaint to the Kentucky Board of Nursing, and that's wow. the body that protects the public from from harm. Sure. And um, so it, the, the requirement has beca- become quite obsolete. Um, and not necessary. It's a barrier to care. Mm-hmm. So we're asking at this point in time for it to be the rec- that requirement be lifted. So Senate Bill 51, that's what this is about. Basically, there's a Senate bill that's up right now in the legislature. And I know that, you know, everybody's very concerned about it. And it would remove the requirement that nurse practitioners have to find a doctor to right. sign off on this agreement. And what if they can't find a doctor? I mean, then they can't practice, right? Exactly. Wow. So what's the deal on Senate Bill 51? What are you asking for in that legislation? To completely remove that that barrier to care. Gotcha. And not require that when we practice, that we practice without having a prescribing agreement. And that is only thing that it is. It is a... um, it's not a, a contractual agreement in that, you know, my collaborating physician is going to oversee so many charts mm-hmm. or that I'm going to refer to that that physician for information about medications or how to prescribe because I do that on my own. Sure. And, and when I make my diagno- diagnostic assessment, then I know from my experience and my education what I need to use to help that person get better. So what's it going to cost the state to remove that requirement from the bill? Leela? Zero. Yeah, (laughs) there you go. Not a nickel. (laughs) Zero, not a a plug nickel, right? So is it in effect, too, that nurse practitioners who are treating military personnel already operate on their own and they don't have to have a doctor overseeing them? Yes. Right. And, yes. And we don't, in, in Kentucky, still, the doctors are not overseeing us. Just the prescription writing. Only, well, they don't even oversee that. We have what are, to well, have, what do they do? Why do they have the agreement? Sign the paper. Oh. It is just, it's a paper like Do this. they treat us? Do they come in and do they see our records and do we, you guys pass them along? In really? Fact, well, that seems kind of strange. See the... It's not in the, it's not on my collaborative agreement. Now, anytime that you enter into, you know, you have somebody sign mm-hmm. a paper with you, then you may have some individual differences. But the basic information is my name, my license, the doctor's name, the doctor's license, and that they know that I am writing prescri- prescribing medication that wow. is non, non-scheduled non drugs. Okay. Lean in there, Leila. Well, and I think one thing that may be confusing is that what nurse practitioners do right now 
it's, it's not going to change. They're not yes. going to do anything more after right. this requirement is lifted. They're not going to expand their scope of practice, which not is, do anything less which is banded about. They're yeah. going to continue to practice and do what they've always done. It really just eliminates a piece of paper. It's, yeah. it's an obsolete. It's kind of, I would guess you'd compare it to a blue law. You can't buy pantyhose in Kentucky after, you know, before 12 noon on a Sunday, right? right. That's a blue law. It doesn't really apply anymore. Right. Tin foil also falls under that. So that okay. and the requirement to have this prescriptive agreement, I guess, all kind of falls under the same umbrella. We okay, really so- believe this is a barrier to patient care because if my prescribing collaborative physician uh-huh. decided to not have a, a an agreement with me any longer. Yes. Then I couldn't practice the way I practice. So what if the guy died? The same thing. I would have to find somebody else wow. to be my collaborative provider. So I could see that as something that would probably be an impediment to a nurse practitioner actually setting up their own practice because I know I've seen a proliferation of nurse practitioners offices yes. because we, you know, all require so much care in our aging population and everything else and I don't know that we're producing enough doctors. I mean, just as an observation, I see a lot more nurse practitioners coming into the business. Mm -hmm. So actually giving them not having to to worry about that agreement could be a positive for people setting up their own businesses, right? Absolutely. Cool. So what is your education, Kathy? Well, I started in, let's see, 1971. Oh, she's (laughs) aging. She's dating herself now. (laughs) With an associate degree from Eastern Kentucky University. And then I practiced for a while in a variety of different healthcare settings. And then I got a bachelor's degree from the University of Kentucky, practiced for another 13 years or so, and then decided that I wanted to advance my practice. And so I went back and have a a graduate degree. That's fantastic. Um, So I have a master's of science in nursing. Excellent. And 17 years of being a nurse practitioner. Yeah, well, you know, and there's a there's, there's certain amount of years that doctors have to put in, too. But you guys are actually trained in all of the basic care that most people would need, correct? Yes. yes. So talk to us about some of the things that you as a nurse practitioner do on a daily basis. I mean, I know you're in the family exactly. care. Um, well, uh, well, family care. You're not going to go in and remove a liver, obviously. Uh, no. Okay, no. that's good. And if I thought that somebody <laughs> needed that, I would refer them to a surgeon. <laughs> <laughs> that would be good. Right. <laughs> We're not going to do that in the office. <laughs> but um, what I do on a daily basis, since my, my main practice is in women's health care, and I work for uh, the North Central District Health Department out of Shelby County. Gotcha. And um, so... I do women's health care all day long. So I I do all the family planning, the basic general uh, physical assessments, and then prescribing them whatever they need in order to plan their families and also prenatal care. I provide that. So on other days, I work for the Norton Immediate Care Centers here in Louisville. And and that day, I'm likely to see, you know, the like I did last Saturday, the you know the eight year old with strep throat. Yes. And you provide a, a complete head to toe assessment for depending on what they they have in mind, and uh, prescribe or order a lab test, the strep test, and pretty comprehensive um, care, and then prescribe them whatever medication is appropriate for what their allergies are and their age and their weight and. Excellent. And that sort of thing. So, Leela, the Kentucky Coalition of Nurse Practitioners and Nurse Midwives, right now working, obviously, to have Senate Bill 51 pass. What can you suggest to people who hear what you say and agree with that uh, suggestion? Well, hot off the press, um, Yes, Yes. our bill language (laughs) has now been attached to another bill or amended. A writer. Um, Yeah. Uh (laughs) And it's... uh, the nice thing about it, it it's it's a health care bill. Good. It's, it's known as the PA bill, which uh, will expand. Uh, Physicians uh, assistance. Yes. Stuff? It, ex, uh, expand their ability to, to provide uh, primary care as well. Fantastic. So um, if you're so inclined to call your representative, especially if uh, they're on the House Health and Welfare Committee. There you go. And ask for a yes vote on SB 43 with committee sub. Well, that's <laughs> always good to know. And you can also go to the website. I'm sure. What is your website for the Kentucky Coalition? It is the shortcut, KYNP.org. KYNP.org. And I'm sure there will be explicit instructions on how to do exactly what they just told you to do. Mm-hmm. Layla Fawcett and Kathy Waits, thank you both so much for coming in thank with you. that great Thanks, information Nora. about nurse practitioners. We appreciate Thanks. you.
Appreciate Thank it. You. Thank, Thank you. you so much, James. Um, I am dying to hear you play and sing again. Would you take another two minutes and give us whatever um, you're most inclined to do? And tell me why you're switching guitars, just out of curiosity. I didn't know if we were going to just be doing a little fill-in. Uh, that one is in Dad Gad, which is what all my music's written in. Okay. And this one's just in standard. I see. So. Whatever that meant. James Sane, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, take it away. <laughs> yeah, well, this is uh, Towns Van Zandt. Ah, <laughs> awesome. We had a big tribute to him on New Year's Day. That I was sad I didn't know about this. Sponsored by Crescent Hill Radio, and it was tremendous. <laughs> I loved it. So you're going to have to come to the next one, January yes. 1st next He's year. my favorite singer song. Awesome. Is, so. Okay. I used to wake and run with the moon Living like raking your men I covered my lovers, flowers and moons and After the devil would frighten The sun she would come and beam me back down Oh, every cruel day had its nightfall Welcome the stars, wide and getting tired, full of fire and forgetful. Well, my body was sharp, and dark hair is clean, outraged my joyful companions, and whispering women, sweet and seen, kneeling. For me to command them and Time was like water I was seeing Lord I wouldn't have known to step past them Except for turning Night in the day On the turning of day And the cursing Beautiful. Oh, Towns Van Zandt, such a talented writer, and James Sane just performs his music with such passion. I love that. So uh, the we're going to talk just a minute about the, the 700 Song Project. Okay. Tell me about it. Well, basic chip for the entire situation is there's a, I, I'm not really type that's like, oh, I just like country or, you know. You like I, a lot of music. I like everything. You yeah. know, you can learn a little bit from everything. There's that's right. There's good and bad and everything. So. Um, so I just picked like top 100 songs. You know, I, I cross sourced a lot of different, you know, polls and stuff like that. Cool. So top 100 like pop and jazz and blues, classical and all this stuff. And I thought, you know, sit down, learn like seven a day and work on one song throughout the week. And I'd post each of these songs online. And that way with YouTube, I can use all the analysis stuff to kind of yeah see Who's listening? Yeah, see who's listening, what they like, and uh, <clears throat> that'll help direct me a little more. And that's in between your shifts uh, as a barista at Nancy's <laughs> Bagel Grounds on Frankfurt Avenue, part of our Frankfurt Avenue Business Association. And I know she's very proud of you and all the work you do. You're a great <laughs> customer service representative and a budding star. Well, thank you very much. You're more than welcome. <laughs> thank you very much, he says, just like Elvis. <laughs> so <laughs> I am so proud of James, and, and I discovered him, actually. Oh, yeah, I great. did. Right, James? No. Yeah, I was hiding <laughs> under a rock. So. Yeah. <laughs> I actually just got lucky because I, I said, do you, you know, do you have any friends who do music? And he goes, well, I do music. And he agreed to come on my show. And so this is his his uh, re repeat performance because he was so loved, his encore. He just loved it. Frederica Chambers joins me. She's an animal communicator. And I want to first ask you exactly what animal commu communication is because – um, I experienced it when you spoke to my youngest four-legged son, Wyatt, and it was quite fascinating. So describe what it is to, to be an animal communicator. Well, uh, um, we're, animal communication is um, I read um, the thoughts and the emotions and the images that animals, all animals, all different species, mm -hmm. um, project, and they read mine. So it is true communication. It's a conversation. Uh, it is. I get, I get words. I get images. I get um, emotions. I get a lot of information. That's fascinating. So you don't actually have to guess. No. You're actually getting yeah. an animal's perspective on things. It is. It's, it's true communication. Um, and I'm not telling the future or anything like that. No. It's not this. People... 
you're people, actually telling people have the present. Some, yes, the present <laughs> or the past. I do a lot uh-huh. of um, a lot of um, my clients have rescues and want to know what's been going on, what's gone on before yes. um, the animal um, reached them, and that can be very health, helpful sure and can. healing. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And animal communication can work in person. Uh, from photos, which is how you and I did it, from uh-huh. animals who have actually passed over, mm-hmm. and yes. sometimes not even using a photograph. That I I prefer photos if possible yes. because I can connect to the animal through a person. Yes, um, but I always wonder what is what I'm getting from directly from the animal and what's being filtered through that person. Sure. So um, I do it when there's no photo, but I do prefer photos or, or live animals. I'm curious as to how you realized you had this capability. And people ask psychics that all the time, too. When did you know that you actually could communicate with animals? Well, I've been doing it all my life, but I didn't know it. I didn't know other people weren't doing really? what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> and so I heard about this crazy thing called animal communication, and I thought, gee, I wonder if I could do that. And then it was and when I found out what it was, I realized, oh, whoops, oh, whoops. I've been <laughs> doing that all my life. <laughs> what do you mean you can't? Did you see Dr. Doolittle ever when you were uh, I am. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Is that your favorite movie No, ever? it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't speak dog. I don't speak elephant. I don't speak iguana. <laughs> I don't make grunts. I don't, you know. No, actually, I did love Dr. Doolittle, but no. Um it's it's when when I was talking to elephants in Thailand or or a dog in in Korea, um, those animals um, would speak to me, um, and I don't speak Korean and and Thai. But do the dogs? But <laughs> well, well, they understand. They do certain commands in in sure in that language. But um, when you're when you're communicating, my brain is interpreting what they're saying. So it's sure. sort of this learn universal language. Well, that's and it's going like on. talking to somebody in another language. Your brain is working in your own language, translating what's being said. And I've talked yeah. to people who are multilingual, so I yeah. can see how that would work. Yeah. Now, applications. What would require, and I had a very special application. What would uh, be something that would want, you know, a family would want you to talk or communicate with their animals? And mine was why it's having behavioral issues mm-hmm. in the house. Yeah. And uh, the pack structure has recently changed, and he was acting out. He would bolt through the gate. He'd want to go after squirrels. He would disobey. He was getting aggressive with his food. And by the way, all of that behavior has ceased. Mm-hmm. So share with the, the people who are fascinated by this subject what your experience was communicating with Wyatt. Well, Wyatt is such a sweetheart, and he loves you. Yes, and, and I love and him. And he's got some issues sharing you and, yes. um, and all these new animals. and, and um, But he's got a tremendous amount of puppy energy still. Yes, for sure. Um, so... All of this is, he's a little bit too exuberant. He's a little bit, he wants to run a little too far, too fast. He wants yes. this, that. He's, he's um, which is normal puppyhood. And, <laughs> yeah. and, and, and our when puppies, they're four, uh, it starts to get a little old. A little chaotic, yeah. <laughs> well, and the chaotic, one thing you yeah. said to me that really made an impression is you said the first thing that you and Wyatt communicated was, I want my mommy. And yeah. he was saying, I was absent. Yes. For him, too much. Yes. And so I have used the technique that you gave me of sending him little picture postcards in my mind saying, you know, I, I love you, Wyatt. I'm going to be home soon. We're going to go to the park, have mm-hmm. a great time. And, you know, it's, it's been a kind of an amazing experience. It makes them very, very happy and comforts them. Yes. yes. Because they're, they're, when they're acting out, they are crying for some sort of help. Just like a child. Um, exactly. And, and a lot of times, now sometimes I had a, one cat who wanted her own room. Okay, that wasn't going to happen. <laughs> But she did get her own perch in oh, a room there you go. with her mummy. Um, so, you know, sometimes you have to negotiate some of these things. It's not that, that um, they're going to get every single thing. Um, but with communication, you get to know specifically what's going on. You're not just guessing. Um, so these things can be addressed. Well, when you have family breakups, when you have a divorce or somebody moving yeah. in or moving out, or you have problems that are going on or a fear of the veterinarian, mm. if they, you said about the rescue is getting their history, those things could all be extremely helpful if you were able to communicate with those animals and find out what's going on in your head. Because they're part of the family and we treat them as our children. Yeah, absolutely. We spend billions of dollars on our pets (laughs) every single year. We do. Yes, and I see a time when, I mean, I, I think that everybody should have a vet 
anybody who has animals should have a vet and they should have an animal communicator because it is so helpful um, in situations. It's even, even helpful to vets um, to find out how the animal actually feels because vets are great and necessary. Yes, um, absolutely. Absolutely. But, um, you know, they do a lot of guesswork. They have to do, they guess a lot. Because the they, animals and then can't they, talk to right, them. Exactly. And then they follow <laughs> up with tests and things like that. I'm not saying, I'm not taking away from them. But, um, for example, one of my cats um, was throwing up. Yes. Um, and she she was not nauseous. Now, a vet would have assumed that because she was throwing up so much, she was nauseous. Yes. Um, but because I could describe exactly how she felt, um, the vet knew to do the barium x-rays and... and um, we just cut to the chase and got her got her diagnosed correctly. And, That's amazing. And so it uh, it can be helpful in any situation that you're in. Well, I'm very glad yes. to hear that. And human clients are also people who you would want to talk to because if this is the vets, any kind of doctors, students, artists, teachers, professors, grocery grocery clerks, people yes. who work on computers, uh, you've got all kinds of human clients. Absolutely, absolutely. And um, these animals. It, they're not in a vacuum. Right. So a lot of my work is helping the humans adjust to certain what what the what animals need. Well, you gave me some it. very good points yeah, yeah. as far as things that I needed to do to change what I was doing with Wyatt to make him function a little bit better mm -hmm. in the pack and in the house. And, and those are very helpful suggestions. How do we get in touch with you if someone's interested in having you communicate with their animals? And I also know that you appear uh, around town at events where people mm -hmm. can actually come and bring the animals to you. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, yes. Um, well, I do this every day. Yes. Um, so I am at events, but I, I you can contact me. Um, my phone number is 502-767-5898. Okay. Um, I'm on Facebook. Um, you can message me. Um, and um, so we can do it over the phone. We can do it in person. We can we can work it out. Um, and and do you come up to, where is it, Barkstown? Where's the place Barkstown that you Barkstown Road. Yeah. Yes. Talk yes. to us about that. When's that next event coming the up? The next one is um, March 23rd. Okay. It's their year, year anniversary. Um, very exciting. And they're going to have all kinds of, of things. And they've asked me back because the last one was so successful. Very much so, fun. So um, I'll do 15-minute sessions there. Um, normally with clients. When I start out, I do half-hour sessions. Sure. Or if you've got a horse, it'll be an hour. <laughs> Horses. They have a why? lot to say. A lot they of do. drama. A lot of lot, like lot. Mr. Ed. Yes. A horse oh. is a horse, of yes. horse, of horse. You know so. I have a television reference for everything, right? <laughs> <laughs> but that's fascinating, Frederica. So yes. um, my question to you before we go is, do you ever do follow-up with any of your clients as far as, like, have you had any conversations with Wyatt since we chatted? And is there anything else I need to be aware of? Um, I haven't with, with Wyatt because because you haven't specifically asked for it, but I do um, recommend that if we're working on behavioral issues, yes, follow-up is a great thing because um, because it's like any behavior that you that we have. Yes. When we're trying to change something, we need reminders. And support. Yes, and support. So um, follow-up sessions are, are very important. Very good. Um, and I also communicate with animals who have passed over. Um and all kinds of, of animals. So, Wonderful. Well, yes. thank you so much for taking the time to come in and share your gift thank with you for us. Having me. And for communicating with Wyatt. Oh, I loved it. And he it's appreciated you very much. <laughs> she is a great dog. Frederica Chambers, yes. ladies and gentlemen, look her up on Facebook. She is an animal communicator. She'll be at Barkstown Road at the end of the month to celebrate their big first year anniversary. Yes. Thanks for coming in. Thank you, Tara. Sure, appreciate you. <laughs> and uh, Cree and Hetty, the greatest jingle writers in the world, are going to entertain us for a few seconds, and then we're going to have a little bit more music from James Sane. We'll be right back.
that is so beautiful. Who wrote that? Is that yours? That's mine. Wow, and that's a James that Sane original <laughs> composition. I'm sorry, Kelly, I made you jump with my big wow. <laughs> Kelly Newton, ladies and gentlemen, associate producer, and Kathy Weisbach. And hey, that reminds me, before we go on, I need to talk about our fundraiser because the Crescent Hill Radio annual fundraiser is coming up April 28th. That's the Sunday before Derby at Expo 5, which is an awesome venue. We have all kinds of bands that are fantastic, and we invite you to join. Now, if you want to become a member of Crescent Hill Radio, 25 bucks for the whole year gets you free admission to the concert as well. And tons of other benefits that I won't go into now, but the most important one is you get into the concert for free. 4 to 10 p.m. April the 28th at Expo 5. Go to CrescentHillRadio.com and look for the big uh, signature at the left-hand side, and it says, Join Now, Become a Member. $25 $25 for the year. That's a pretty good deal, Kirk Candle. That's a good deal. Don't you agree? Hey, Speaking to the microphone. Absolutely. I think Great so, deal. too. And Kirk Candle is a huge uh, fan of Crescent Hill Radio because you are a huge fan of the Green Triangle. The Ninth District is all of our home. Yes, and it you've is. been a huge uh, proponent of ever since I've known you, and that's been for quite a while. Saving gas, saving time, saving money, but mostly saving our environment by riding the bike, which is why you are well known as the bicycle man. And your own good health. Absolutely. I mean, I have had many good tutors who are uh, healthy, robust people uh, like Joe Ward, another Crescent Hillian, yes. who has written a couple of books. My mentor, my guru, if you will, uh, rode his bike to work for 30 years, now retired, but uh, wrote a couple of books, uh, uh, Wheeling Around Louisville, Wheeling Around the Bluegrass. How cool. And just a great, great guy. Well, you know, he uh, didn't have to give me too much of a nudge because I've always been a bicycle guy. And it's it's in my DNA. To well, and you actually rode across around. the country because of your DNA. Well, it... it yeah, <laughs> if a bicycle can get you 4,600 miles across the U.S., you know, self-supported, I, I loaded that thing up to its maximum capacity. I was I was riding a 90-pound bicycle. That's amazing. You know, with all my gear. And that so, was to raise money for? Well, I raised almost $10,000 for the American Diabetes Association. Amazing. And with a lot of help, help of about 150 people. Uh, I, I just spammed them to death. You yes, know? I bet. <laughs> from from out there in the middle of Idaho or wherever. That's terrific. You know? That's and, terrific. Yeah. And and basically, when you talk about the Green Triangle, you have a, there's a great website, by the way, mygreentriangle.com, and you can find out how to make your part of the world much more sustainable and fantastic. There's a survey you can fill out. You can find out all kinds of things, and, and there are so many points to being green. What are the key ones that you want to hit right now? Stormwater is a big one, I guess. Stormwater is a big deal. Right now, there are about six different initiatives. Um, and they uh, they're all out on the on the on the website. So really, just you know, don't take my word for it, and don't take notes right now. Uh, just go to uh, mygreentriangle.com. Yes. You'll find and it. you'll find out what all these initiatives are are the things that have been identified that are, from a survey of our Crescent Hill Ninth District. Uh, that's this Crescent Hill Clifton, uh, all the way into Butchertown, just a little bit. Uh, it's a it's a the reason why we're the Green Triangle. Is because the triangle is the ninth district. Fantastic. That's the the district boundary. It looks like a triangle, and that's uh, where uh, this all these uh, experimental initiatives are are going on. We've already rolled out the the recycling, and it's to been a huge success. Other parts of the city, um, and you know, it's it's saving a huge stream of cardboard, plastic, metal, all that. Um, and, it, you know, I'm, I was frankly very surprised when I got involved that it wasn't already happening. Yeah. I mean, because these are the things that we were talking about on Earth Day in 1970. That's you right. Know? Uh, what happened in the intervening 30 years? You know, why are 40? Why Why are we uh, so far behind the curve? Well, you know, uh, I think a lot of this stuff just isn't all that sexy. It's not you glamorous, know? is it? But I tell you, it, it becomes a great uh, game to see how you can sort your junk out. I mean, it, all the stuff that I walk in the alley sometimes with my dog, and I'm amazed at, at, at still the cardboard and stuff that gets just thrown in dumpsters. Exactly. It never reaches the stream. Now, the city gets money from that, and you know it helps our revenue stream in our city if you do uh, recycle glass and plastic and metal. And, and if and you break cardboard. down your boxes, which that. is the key thing, and yep. you put them into the recycling, it makes a huge difference 
and it does actually generate revenue for the city. Yeah, and be amazed at all the compost you might have for your garden, all the uh, – if you sort your stuff out, what you find out is you really don't need more than about a, maybe a cubic foot for the trash, yeah. the actual stuff that's going to go into landfill. Yeah. And you're going to reverse from that little – tiny recycling bin, it's not going to be sufficient. So that's what, that's the idea behind we got these great big bins now that are orange, or they have orange tops, and they cost 50 bucks. but you can co-op with your neighbors if you uh, aren't going to fill one of those in a week t- week's time, and you can get them in and uh, and fill them up with the car- cardboard and glass and plastic and metal. And, and, and buildings and apartment buildings and condo yeah. associations can really use them. And I know that a lot of times you start with one and then you figure, wow, they're actually using them. We're going to expand to three and then you're yeah. going to see six and pretty soon you're going to see a recycling dumpster. And it's amazing the difference that you can make in reducing the waste stream. And, and now we've got a whole lot of people in the neighborhood who are, if you aren't already doing it, collect your uh, water from your rooftop uh, through your gutters, your downspouts, instead of them being con- connected in the combined sewers, you can get a barrel and collect that water and use it in your garden and so forth. This is a very big deal. We don't want that water going down into the combined sewers. Um, you get uh, a, a, you know, a lot of uh, environmental problems from that. And th- that's all being eliminated. So very soon, you're not even going to be able to do that. But we're way ahead of the curve on well, that. Well, I've seen the rain barrels all over town. Now, I wonder yep. where we would be able to obtain those. Well, go on the uh, Green, green triangle. triangle, My Green Triangle, My green triangle. Dot com. Com, and you can find That's out about it. That's the answer to every question. And if you have any questions, um, you know, Katie Holmes uh, on uh, uh, con- um, Tina, Councilwoman Tina Orpuse. Tina Orpuse. You're going to say Congresswoman, con- won't you? Council, because that's what we'd like to see con- her be. It's, yeah, Councilwoman. <laughs> no, I like to see her right here. I know, I do too. Doing what she's doing, President, she's great. She's President great. Tina Orpuse. Yeah, yeah, but uh, uh, Katie Holmes is is her staff person who's uh, listed there and, and can answer a lot of questions. And I, I've gone into kind of um, an adjunct council uh, person. I'm not as good at uh, sitting through meetings as I am getting out and talking Doing about things. it. And That's and right. uh, and my passion, of course, is the transportation angle, which I think we can all do a lot to uh, save our health and our money. Yes. It's amazing that – um, the cost uh, that that you know in in our health especially uh, the, the um, and and you know if we can take fifteen thousand cars out of the uh, local environment and get them off the registration what we what we can do is we can get one hundred and twenty seven million dollars back into our local economy that's incredible and we could still you know have the, those cars we need we need we need to i'm not anti car no I'm, you just don't get in one. i'm just saying <laughs> I, i'm just saying i don't want to own one thing no, exactly no. Um, well you know what you can find out so much more and and i could talk to this man for an hour about just the first few issues at the green triangle but go to mygreentriangle.com because it's a very very useful site and contact kurt candle on facebook Yes. And on your website. Absolutely. Get a map and map out the within a two mile radius all the places where you might go for a haircut, uh, for a, a grocery shopping trip, uh, whatever, and, and start doing those things by bike and, right. and by walking. Where you don't and you're going to drive. feel so good. And as little as 30 minutes a day average. Uh, on average, is going to get, uh, reduce your heart risk by fifty percent. That's amazing. A lot of cancers are uh, uh, mitigated by you know, your, your risk of, of a lot of cancers and uh, heart disease and cancer and stroke are all um, you know reduced by just being active. You will see yeah. Kirk out on his bicycle everywhere around the Crescent Hill neighborhood and points farther away because he drives his bike every place. He does not drive a car anymore, and boy, he is fit and there's, ready to there's go. There's a growing number of us. That's right. Good you'll, for you. You're seeing more. Be kind to those people on two wheels. Be aware. Yeah, you've got a couple of mishaps. Be very aware of your bicycle friends. They are saving our uh, air quality, they are saving us a lot of congestion, That's right. and they're you know they're they're doing something for us. So. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate yep. you. Always good to see you. Glad We're going to have Kirk back talk a little bit more about the Green Triangle. In the meantime, James is going to sing and play for us, and we're going to have our blown glass artist come in, Sergio Vittori, coming up next. Thanks.
love that. Who's that for? Is that yours? Yeah, it's mine. Oh my gosh, again. I cannot believe the talent in this man. What's it called? <laughs> Oh, that's Red River. That's I like that. That's, last time. that's the beautiful one about the sunrise over the Red River Gorge. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> thank you, James Sane. Sergio Vittori, Blown Glass Artist, joins us. And, and thank you for being so patient. Thank you for inviting me, Tara. I am so happy to invite you. And I'm so happy to have you be a, a guest on the show because I met you at the Melwood Arts Center. And you're, you're friends with my friends, Marina and Mark, who are doing the active dog. And yes. you are a glass blowing maniac. I mean, <laughs> this is a beautiful piece. And I love the fact that you just told me you've got about 80 hours into this one piece of work. Yeah, I didn't really count the hours, but it's about 80 hours, maybe more. There's about 300 leaves, so each one had to be done one at a time. And then painstakingly, I had to put each one of them on there. That's uh, incredible. Trying to figure out where to not clump too many together and... And making you can, it look like it flows well. You know, you can see the little dancing people inside because it's clear like an egg, and then the roots are around the top, and then the, the beautiful limbs come up. And I know it's not television, so we're describing it to you, but you have a website where we can actually see some of this stuff, right? Yes, it's louisvillebluglass.com. Blue glass. Blue, B-L-E-W, since we're glass blowers. Oh, cute! So there you go. Blue, gl- so bluegrass.com. Blue glass. I like glass. that. <laughs> and you can also see his work at the Melwood Arts Center because yep. um, the place is just full of fabulous people but I loved Sergio when I met him and that's why I asked him to come on the show part of the reason I love you most is because some of what you do benefits this wonderful charity and it's called Art from the Heart and it's going to be at the Seelbach um, March the 9th which is a Saturday at 6 p.m. and this is a fantastic opportunity to contribute to an organization that is doing great things. Talk to us just a little bit about Art from the Heart, Sergio. Well, Art from the Heart is a fundraiser for an organization called the Council for Development, Developmental Disabilities. Yes. And basically they help uh, individuals who are either adults or kids who are physically or mentally handicapped. That's um, amazing. So they're having their great fundraiser uh, like they do every year on uh, March 9th. And uh, I'll be part of it. The tree is actually a donation uh, that Aww. I'm that I'm giving, and uh, they're going to have a silent auction for it. And I'll be the featured art- artist for the show. So I love that. So let's just think about this. If what what do you think you should be paid an hour for your work? Oh, uh, you know, I, I tell people I'm a volunteer glass blower, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I just show up in my studio. And no, I'd, I'd like it'd be nice to make fifty, sixty dollars an hour. A lot yes. of a lot of glass blowers make more than that. Okay, um, so multiply that by eighty hours, and what do you come up with? Sixty times eighty. Yeah, sixty oh, times man, eighty. Uh, forty-eight hundred. Eight, yeah, forty-eight. So this piece is about forty-eight hundred dollars oh. worth of labor, and that's not even the intrinsic value of the piece as a no, unique piece of art. No, it's not. I love that, Sergio. And, and it's and unique. You're it's one of a kind. It. You'll never see another one like it because I'll can probably never imagine. make another one like it. <laughs> I, I bet you. I bet you won't put eighty hours into a tree with an egg on it with people dancing inside. You'll no. come up with a new and wonderful idea. Even better. Yes, actually, I'm working on a pyramid right now. Are you? It has vines growing on it. And uh, inside the pyramid are more vines. And on those vines are little people that look like vines. So I love that. So there's a theme here I see developing about vines. Vines, yes. <laughs> If we wanted to come down to Melwood and see you at work, could we do that? Yes. If what you studio wanna, are you in? If you want to climb three floors or three flights of stairs, we're at Studio 306 at the Melwood Art Center. Kirk will be there because he likes to climb stairs, and he probably could ride his bike up the stairs. Awesome. Yeah. I look He's a healthy I, kind of guy. <laughs> so that's really you. awesome, and I love the fact that you're contributing your artwork and you're going to be the future artist. Let me give this, uh, this one more little plug. This is called Art from the Heart, March the 9th, uh, Saturday at 6 p.m. at the Sealbox. Hilton, and this is to benefit the Council on Developmental Disabilities, and you can find out more information by calling 584-1239. You can email uh, M. Wilkerson, that's M-W-I-L-K-E-R-S-O-N, at Council on DD, which is Council on Development Disabilities dot org. And you can also find out more at the website, which is Council on DD dot org. See how you can help the Council uh, of Developmental with uh, it is of, isn't it? The Council on Developmental Disabilities. And see the beautiful work that Sergio Vittori is doing and contributing. This Tree of Life is going to be a wonderful thing. And I'm assuming they're going to auction it off? Yes. Silent well, I auction. hope they will ask me to come and auction it off because I think I can get you a good number for it. You should come Why over? don't you suggest that I'll, to them? I'll mention it to I'll, them. I'll try to raise that, that uh, a little bit more because I'm pretty good at auctioning things. And when you've got something really wonderful like this, 
amazingly, people are willing to pay more, especially if they know it's going to a good cause. And what's even better is it's going to have a stand with a little light that shines in the egg. <gasps> and the egg is white on the inside, so you'll really be able to see the little people dancing in there. That is so cool. And then you could actually continue the theme by putting it on um, a rotating disc with vines all around it. Well, it's going to have moss. <laughs> real no moss. No moss in this. No vines in this no one. No vines in this Just one. moss. I no. love that. Okay, so Sergio's at the, the uh, Melwood Arts Center. What's the website, or is there a Facebook connection that we can get to um, see some of your work? You can Facebook me. You can find me at, at Sergio Vittori. You can also call me. Uh, my number is 502-930-0072. And uh, I'm not very good with email. I can I still give that, it to you. It's, but you still call me, <laughs> which is I, I really call good. You. Yeah, I'm good with phones. I love but, that. But I, what are you holding in your hand there? I actually made you a little gift. <gasps> um, you didn't. I made the pendant. It's called a Flyer of Paradise. Oh, and my I actually gosh. actually use dental picks to pick each dot one Sergio, at a time to that take is them too in beautiful shape of the for pedal. words. I love that. Thank you. And then you. I beaded the necklace myself. So. You're a sweetheart. That Absolutely. was such an unnecessary but very much appreciated gift. Well, thank you for inviting me. Thank you for being here. And you can come back and show us another beautiful piece of art whenever you're ready. I would love to. Sound like a plan? Yes. Thanks for your time. Thank Don't you, leave Tara. for just a second because okay. we want to thank our guests uh, with James playing some beautiful music under me. I want to thank my. Oh, he's got to switch guitars again. And what, <laughs> what was that thing that you said? That um, guitar is a what? Oh, this tuned to a different tuning. It's like a slide guitar tuning. Okay. Um, but I want to. So just... it's not my dog has fleas. No, that's ukulele. <laughs> uh, it's different though. Yeah, it just it. I can get more into like the eastern kind of. Gotcha. Tones. You know the. Gotcha. I don't know. I don't know how to really. The Bollywood it. music. No, yeah. just kidding. James Sane, beautiful music, and thank you to him. Thank you to Sergio Vittori, who just presented me with this absolutely extraordinary piece of original art from his blown glass. And this beautiful piece is going to be auctioned off at the uh, fantastic Council on Developmental Disabilities uh, Art from the Heart coming up March 9th. Thank you, Sergio. We appreciate you, you being with us. Kirk Candle, the green machine. He is the expert on green in the green triangle. Scott sent us fabulous graphics and Frederica Chambers for her unbelievable animal communication skills. Leela Fawcett and uh, Kathy Waits for their nurse practitioners exposure and experience. They are doing a lot for nurse practitioners in the city. Next Monday, Dr. Peter Swans will be here. He is a naturopath and uh, very, very good on healing. Barbara Barbara Sexton Smith is going to talk fun for the arts. Tanya Ablin will join us on the social side of Louisville. And Bridget Case, who is one of our favorite rescuers. She has misfit rescues. And believe it or not, Mark and Dan, the cheaters, are going to be back with their live music. Back by popular demand. So we will see you next Monday at 5 live on Take It From Tara. Have a great week. degrees. It's 602. Hi, my name is Wilson Brown and you're listening to Crescent Hill Radio. Now here's 